Hello everybody, welcome along. My name is Benjamin Bloom. This is the Benjamin Bloom Football Channel. Please leave your bias at the door and join us for our dearly departed Premier League preview show for round 31. Eight rounds to go in the Premier League. Still much to play for, especially if our dearly departed in the bottom three can uh, get some wins and maybe we get a relegation push with um, Leeds and Villa flying the flag a little bit further up the table. Who are the dearly departed? Well, they are the teams that I covered in the championship that very cleverly managed to get their way into the Premier League. And we didn't want to lose that interaction, did we? So we are talking uh, Aston Villa and Sheffield United, who went up in 2019, and Leeds, Fulham and West Brom, who went up in 2020. We're going to have a look ahead to all of their games this weekend. First of all, let's just say a big thank you to Jay Coyle, who is our fan sponsor, Dearly Departed, also known as Ben. Couldn't bear to lose us. Absolutely not. <clears throat> totally right. I couldn't bear to lose um, Leeds and all the other promoted teams. And thank you to Jay. He got involved over on Patreon. <clears throat> Excuse me. Have a think about um, getting involved too. Best way to support the channel on a regular basis. Patreon.com slash Benjamin Bloom. Regular shows over there. Q&A. Classics reviewed with Dave. More coming next season as we try and grow this thing. Right. Let's have a look at the round 31 fixtures. What have we got? As ever, dearly departed matchups with the blue bell to the right. And there are three of them to begin with. The first three, the late Friday night, early Saturday and Saturday 3pm games are Liverpool, um, wrong way up, Fulham versus Wolves um, on Friday. Manchester City versus Leeds on Saturday 12.30. Liverpool versus Villa 3pm on the Saturday uh, Palace, Chelsea, Burnley, Newcastle is a big one for Fulham to keep an eye on. Uh, remember that one when we're looking at the tables. West Ham, Leicester, Spurs, Manchester United. And then uh, Sheffield United, Arsenal at seven on the Sunday. And then West Brom, Southampton on Monday, 6pm. We'll try and do that one as a watch along. I think the timetable works out in that way. Brighton versus Everton after... We go through each and every one of those. As ever, we work from highest in the table downwards. Um, so let's begin with Liverpool versus Aston Villa. And this is quite a significant match this season because, of course, the return game was that crazy 7-2 win for Villa, which sort of signalled that Liverpool might be having some problems this season. It was the sort of first hint of their fallibility after three brilliant years that a cycle was possibly ending. Maybe exacerbated a bit for Klopp and Liverpool with the all the injuries they've had in the centre-half position and deep central midfield position that you then use to cover. So um, it feels like a very different place than it was. That must have only been Villa's fourth or fifth game, you'd have thought, of the season. And really different narrative and different look at Liverpool as a kind of team in transition now and setting up for next season. Uh, Villa have maintained sort of top half status uh, throughout the majority of the season since then. And you can see... We have Liverpool um, in 7th on 49, Villa in 9th on 44, five points gap. Uh, don't even tell me what the gap was last season. I suspect it was more like 40 or 50 points gap. Um, and I'm not even exaggerating there um, with those numbers. Someone will bring it up in the comments. But yeah, a very different story for both clubs this season. Uh, Liverpool played in the Champions League in midweek, lost to Real Madrid 3-1. You can see just down the middle left column um, their recent performances. A couple of defeats in there against Fulham 
and Chelsea victories against Sheffield United and Wolves and um, Arsenal most recently, although Arsenal weren't at it at all uh, with that Merseyside derby defeat there against Everton as well. So still quite hard one to read Liverpool at the moment. You know they're capable of just going out and blitzing everybody if they kind of, the muscle memory clicks into the past three years. It's not particularly happening. They'll beat a lame duck though, won't they? We know that. But um, if you catch them on a bad day now, um, which they just never used to have, I I guess that's the thing, um, there are opportunities. And of course, Villa will be thinking all over again they can do what they did, what, back in September, was it? I can't remember the exact date. So, So for Villa, first win in five last time out against Fulham. We did it as a watch along. And let's not sugarcoat this. This was not Villa um, taking the game to Fulham and demolishing them. This was Villa going a goal down and making a couple of subs and overwhelming Fulham in the last 15 minutes to stick in three goals. It was a win. It was a reasonable enough win. Is it a, a viable enough performance to say, oh, Villa are playing well, Villa are back? Probably not vast elephant in the room, a Jack Grealish-sized elephant that we've talked about over and over again. Um, And the numbers, I don't know what they are. I think someone threw some at me in the stream last time. Villa with Grealish, Villa without Grealish, excuse me, this season. But we know there's been a disparity with and without Captain Jack. There's rumours, look, there's basically all sorts of rumours surrounding Grealish. I don't want to do any allegedly's at the moment or um, speak out of school at all. But he was coming back and then a little relapse and, um, well, who knows? Who knows if he'll be back? That would be the big bonus. Um, Dean Smith continues to go without Ross Barkley as well. Morgan Sanson's in the team. He wasn't there at the, in the first meeting with Liverpool in the club, was he? You would suspect with Trezeguet coming on and scoring two goals as a sub that we might see something like um, Trezeguet in on one side and then it all depends on Grealish with Traore possibly in on the other. I don't know whether they play Trezeguet inverted um, down El Ghazi's side if Grealish isn't there. But um, look, a lot of hopes depend on on Captain Jack and also I mean would he be launched back straight into the first team or on the bench anyway for Liverpool um, yeah improvement against Arsenal wasn't it the fullbacks looked more at it they've got Mane, Firmino, Firmino and Salah on the pitch together it's just Phillips and Kabak at the back obviously still no Henderson, Fabinho etc in central midfield so They're not the team they were. I think you'd be hoping, if you're a Villa fan, uh, for three things. A, Grealish returns and starts and is fit and is good. Uh, B, you do get a bad Liverpool day, a tired Liverpool day after Champions League and, you know, one of their um, mean, poor performances this season. And you'd hope that there's some sense that the attackers don't click and Villa can sit in and maybe get a draw. If I put my dearly departed hat firmly on my head, I don't really see Villa going there and winning. I have to I have to say, I think I'd be more than happy to take four points out of Liverpool through this season. So, and I think I'm saying this with some optimism, let's go for a draw in this one. Villa to go to Liverpool Um, Keep it tight and bring home a point. Let me know your thoughts in the comments on Liverpool versus Aston Villa. Up next, Manchester City versus Leeds. Bielsa versus Guardiola part two. This also feels like we're mirroring rounds from earlier in the season, doesn't it? This also feels like a very early game 
for Leeds. And it does feel like the game where I think Leeds sort of proved themselves to be a viable Premier League team, doesn't it? It was a 1-1 draw. Excuse me. Um, way back in, it must have been September as well, mustn't it? I remember Leeds having some crazy matches, didn't they? 4-3 defeat at Liverpool and a 4-3 win over Fulham. I suspect, did the Sheffield United win come next? I can't quite remember. But this was the one where it was a, a top team and the Leeds football actually you know, kind of worked against the, the Guardiola football for a 1-1 draw. Obviously, we're way down the line here. But Leeds nicely positioned in 11th. Seven points in the last three. I made a suggestion on the last video that, oh, will we now get a trend up for Leeds, given that seemingly for the first time in months they've got their championship squad fit, plus Cock, Rodrigo, Lorente, etc. So the money they invested, haven't been able to use those players, certainly not at the same time, for the most part, the whole season. Rafinha as well, I didn't mention him um, there, did I? So... Uh, I did get some comments back from Leeds fans saying, Ben, fair point about the you know, the squad and a possible end of season trend up, but have you seen the next three games? And it's this one against Manchester City. I think they've got Manchester United and possibly Liverpool as well. They've got some uh, three difficult games now coming up. Leeds. <clears throat> and they go to Manchester City. We're talking about this in terms of the Liverpool and Villa game, about how the narrative differs now. And it, it's very different in terms of Manchester City, who hadn't clicked. Um, you know, I'm not saying this is why Leeds got the point. I'm just saying it took them a while to click this season. And then they went on that mad winning streak. And now look at the table. 14 points clear. Seven to play for Manchester City. Seven to play. Sorry, eight to play for Manchester United. So Manchester United's total here, maximum total, would be 84. Four, um, a Manchester City win would put them to 77. Basically, they're getting very close. If Manchester United then lost, there would be a 17-point gap with Manchester United with um, seven to play. And then you're looking at they can win the title within the next couple of games after that. Obviously, we're making a lot of leaps and assumptions, but of course... They're going to win the title, aren't they? Manchester City. There's the team down there. Aguero is now back fit. De Bruyne now has a new contract. Everything looks lovely. No big injury problems, I don't think, for Manchester City. So um, a very, very formidable opponent. Like I said, Leeds, good results of late. Clean sheet and a draw against Chelsea. Followed by an away win at Fulham. Followed by a home win against Sheffield United. And of course, as we said in the last video, Leeds have punished the teams down at the bottom of the table. And that's exactly what you need to do if you're going to um, first season in the Premier League, stabilise, beat all the waifs and the strays down at the bottom of the table. No disrespect to those teams. I said it in jest, of course. Um... Top half finish, the chances may be prejudiced, Leeds fans are telling me, by these next three games if they have a little um, downturn and then sort of five games to go after that. Maybe they've only got 42, maybe they've only got 43, 44. I mean, I'm saying only. I'm sure if you'd given Leeds fans 38 points going into the last game of the season before a ball had been kicked, they said, OK, we'll take it, go on. We'll take it and um, give us a, give us a game to stay up. Um, but it's been way, way better than that for Leeds. Uh, Lorente starting in the last game against Sheffield United at centre-back. Tyler Roberts has kind of played his way into central midfield. I know Click had COVID issues with Poland, didn't he? But um, certainly making his presence felt where ultimately it might be Rodrigo... Um, who'll end up in that berth. That's what I was talking about, an upward trend. If that team has taken seven points from three and you've still got, and Bielsa's very careful about this, isn't he? Cock to put in and then Rodrigo to put in. It does bode quite well. 
But I do agree with the Leeds fans who are telling me, um, Ben, defer your trend up just for a couple of games. Uh, and with that being said, I'm going to go with Manchester City to get the win here. Remember, Leeds will just show up <laughs> and try and attack them, uh, which could be the best thing they could possibly do. And it could be the worst thing they could possibly do. Often that type of scenario depends on the, the first half, doesn't it? And do you have, have Leeds managed to get a goal, uh, you know, at nil-nil? Or has it swung the other way and they're going in at half time with a deficit of varying amounts to... Um, we all know how these games can go, don't we? So away against the league leaders, especially when you're going to go there and have a pop at them, which obviously... Bielsa will do. That thing is for certain, is it? Look, I'm going to go for a Manchester City win. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Manchester City versus Leeds United. Up next, Fulham versus Wolves. We can call that the Ivan Cavaliero derby, if you're as nerdy as me. Fulham seem to have got themselves in a really nice position to have a pop at getting out of that bottom three. Yes, ground zero is Fulham versus Newcastle on the last day of the season. We know that could still be the defining game, whatever happens um, before, as long as they stay within the three points. But they just fumbled, haven't they, recently? Three straight defeats, OK, fine. They lost to Manchester City, but... Uh, they went under to Leeds and then they went under uh, to Villa, having had the lead. And did they get level against Leeds? I think they did, didn't they? Um, so look, they were in both of those games and they lost both of those games. And as much as we wear our dearly departed hats, I'm sure Scott Parker would have been saying, look, it's Villa and Leeds. They were both in the championship where we were in recent seasons. Can we go get something from these games? And they got... Nothing, and especially frustrating was that Villa game and the collapse. And Scott Parker said it in his post-match as well. Look, when it does go 1-1, the point is still valuable. Don't collapse and lose 3-1. And there was a golden 16 minutes, I think, where we had Fulham at 29 points. And the goal difference would have had them um, going into this weekend had they won 1-0 outside of the relegation zone. Um, lots of positivity around Newcastle as well. We're hearing they drew late against Spurs, didn't they, last week? Oh, Newcastle showed a lot of fight, all of this good stuff. And uh, Steve Bruce, you can see there, gradually, with lots and lots of draws recently, just adding on points. And you, you can see Newcastle won off the magic point per game, which would take to 38. Fulham five off that target so they really really need a win and it's only been one win in the last six can they target this one against Wolves who have three defeats there in the last four against West Ham Liverpool and Manchester City yes caveat ahoy some teams high up in the table there <clears throat> uh, Man City and obviously West Ham in the top four Liverpool 7th, <clears throat> excuse me, um, the last win, interestingly enough, <clears throat> sorry, really struggling with my voice today, was against Leeds, a dearly departed team, however, that was a home game, can Fulham do this, what we will say is that Mitrovic was back for Fulham, having done well for Serbia, and he looked at it, didn't he, he looked his his old self, you know, sort of big, physical Hulk, um, shooting early. He got the goal, okay, Ming's mistake, but he looked, he looked a threat, didn't he? So, um, look, man, that's possibly a worry. He went off in the Villa game. We'll see how he is. Um, you would think a firing look, man, and Mitrovic for the rest of the season would give Fulham the best chance possible in terms of their attacking options for Wolves. I mean, they're still missing uh, Jimenez, who was the go-to guy for the goals the past um, season or more. And um, yeah, just sort of stagnating a little bit now in 14th. Bloom off the rose. 
I don't know. I'm going to put my optimistic dearly departed hat on and say, look, it's a home game against a team who's not quite firing at the moment. No wins in five. Defeats in there. Yes, I know, against better sides. Let's go for it. Come on, Fulham, for the dearly departed. Get the win. I'm predicting a Fulham win against Wolves. And it's the Friday night game as well. It's tonight. We'll be on the watch along doing Watford and Reading. Maybe we'll catch the last 15 minutes of this one as well. And hopefully a glorious Fulham win. We will see. Get your predictions in the comments. Fulham versus Wolves. Well, West Brom were the toast of the dearly departed last week. It's West Brom v Southampton, by the way. West Brom winning 5-2, God damn it, at Chelsea. Unbelievable um, <clears throat> scenes. Yes, Chelsea had Thiago Silva red carded. However, the finishing from Callum Robinson and Matt Pereira, particularly Diania, um got the other goal, was outstanding, wasn't it? And it was still a big Sam XG buster. Wasn't it? They still managed to weather a little bit of a storm in terms of Chelsea attacking presence and then go on the transition and just destroy them. Obviously very helpful that it was 10 against 11. But you can make an argument, a very reasonable argument, for a West Brom trend up. There's the last six and they've now got eight points from six. They have clean sheets in there against Burnley against Brighton, against Newcastle. Uh, the two defeats were 1-0s against Palace and Everton. And then you can stick the 5-2 in and a win against Brighton as well. OK, remember that was a bit of a weird win where Brighton could have scored about five goals and missed a couple of penalties as well, didn't they? However, eight points in six, a little bit of an extrapolation, says give it another six and another eight points, and they go to 29 with two to go, and they may or may not be in touch, depending on what Fulham and Newcastle have done over that period. It does now feel like, with eight to go, it would be something like they'd need to win half of those games, wouldn't they? That would take you, the 12 points there would take you to 33 Still a way off 38 and points parity, which Newcastle are currently one point away from, which you can very crudely put them at 37 if things work out the way they have been. And that doesn't always happen. That really happens, in fact, doesn't it? So it's still a long way off, but there is a trend up. Is it too little too late? Can they do a crazy three wins in four games and really put themselves in contention? There's possibilities here against Southampton, isn't there? Southampton got a good win at, against Burnley last time, didn't they? They were 2-0 down as well. Wood and uh, Vidra had scored and Southampton managed to come back there. Ings back and in the goals. Before that, however, they did go under to relegation rivals Brighton. Got hammered by Man City. Look, it's Man City. Had a win against uh, Sheffield United, but lost to Everton as well. So... It's a bit hard to call, isn't it? Um, there's no real obvious pattern in there. Three defeats and two wins and varying opposition and varying results against varying opposition. I suspect we'll see, if not exactly the same team, we'll, uh, Conor Gallagher will come back in, won't he? Because he couldn't play against Chelsea because they own his registration, his parent club. So you expect Gallagher to come back in, but... Could be a form click for Pereira now, who was clearly their best player in the championship last season with uh, Diane Garner as well. Ajayi back into the team as well. A big set play threat. Look, if anything's going to happen in terms of our dearly departed, I need, I need something like a Fulham win and a West Brom win on the same weekend. So I'm just going to go ahead and optimistically predict it. They've just got to... Um, have a big Sam clean sheet against Ings and Redmond up there. Um, uh, Walcott, Armstrong, Ward Prowse and the set players. You can't do anything about them, even if you've got big Sam in the dugout. They need that clean sheet. Can they get the clean sheet and maybe a 1-0 here? Can they stop Ings and get the win? 
I got my fingers crossed. I'm going to make the prediction because I, I want a rising tide for the dearly departed in the bottom three. Let's go West Brom to go two for two and beat Southampton here at home. Look, it could be worse, this fixture. You let me know what you think in the comments. West Brom versus Southampton. And finally, it is Sheffield United versus Arsenal. I'm not going to put on my resigned Sheffield United voice. I'm going to try and not descend into that. Let's talk about Arsenal quickly because um, I'm sure if you're a Premier League fan, you would have seen Gary Neville really eviscerating Arsenal's performance against Liverpool and talking about some kind of problems and chaos there between manager and players and I'm I'm clutching here and hoping this may work into Sheffield United's favour. They lost that game 3-0, uh, having had a cracker against West Ham 3-3. Uh, beaten Spurs, uh, drawn at Burnley, beaten Leicester. So it was a good little run before then, a defeat against Manchester City. Feels like everybody in, in our list has played Manchester City in the last five games and all, all lost to them, by the way. Um, so, I mean, the criticism was for the front four there, Albamiang, Odegaard, Pepe and Lacazette. Did they work? Can Sheffield United exploit the fancy Dan front four there? Some really good players in that front four as, as well, who, if they're at it, will um, be very viable opponents to beat Sheffield United. But... Who knows? Who knows what's going on behind the scenes? Is Gary Neville right when he says something's not something's not right there? Something's definitely not right at Sheffield United. We had the Villa win, but it's surrounded by another five defeats. So let's do a quick number crunch. If we get a situation this weekend where Sheffield United lose and Newcastle move on to 32 points and get the victory... That would make an 18-point gap with seven games to go. So you'd then be one game away from official relegation. Newcastle play Burnley. It's a nailed-on draw, isn't it? So it may or may not happen. But we are in if-not-when territory. Now, I think John Egan might possibly be close. We've seen rehab pictures of him. Ender Stevens was having to play... Uh, left centre back. They've just been pillaged at centre back this season, haven't they? No Basham either, so Bulldog tucked in in the last game. Osborne starting there as well. Uh, and of course, Sander Berger, they've been without for a while. They did only go down by the one goal against Leeds, but it was yet another defeat for the Blades this season. A 24th defeat in 30 games. Ouch. Can they get anything against Arsenal? The hope is that Gary Neville, as he often is, was right. And there's something amiss here. Uh, they can get amongst Arsenal. Um, but I just think if there is no, uh, obviously no O'Connell, Egan, Basham, Berger, two from four, maybe three from those four, not around. It's just too tough an ask and you can't see them. However, um, we, <laughs> we might want to level... Um, accusations of poor performance at them um, in the previous game. Just can't see them containing the Arsenal forward players. So, sadly, for the feels like the one millionth time this season, I'm going to go for a defeat again for the Blades. I'm going to go for Arsenal to win at Sheffield United. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. That's our show. Uh, thank you again to Jay. Uh, Dearly Departed, also known as Ben, couldn't bear to lose us. Jay is our fan sponsor on Patreon. Please head over to Patreon. We are now kind of coming out of lockdown. I've had such a good bash at this. It's a part-time living for me at the moment. Have a think about... Um, I've got one more payment coming from the um, government after I've been made unemployed um, back in June. So have a think about supporting on Patreon ahead of next season and would love to um would love to be doing this full time over the next season or two so have a think about that over on patreon if not for the princely sum of absolutely nothing please just hit the subscribe button 
ring the bell for notifications. Follow on Twitter at Benjamin Bloom and you can also follow on Facebook if you prefer to use that particular website application, etc. Etc. We are going to be back. It's a bit stretched out this weekend, the Dearly Departed, with West Brom playing on Monday. So I'll see what we're doing. I might get the full review done on Monday morning and then we'll do as a watch along uh, West Brom. So leave that with me. But next Dearly Departed content will either be a review on Monday of all the games other than West Brom and then we'll watch along that one so we've covered it. Or it'll be Tuesday. Probably be Monday, to be honest. So leave that one with me. And I look forward to seeing you there. Get your comments in. Get your predictions. um, Leave your bias at the door. And as always, make this the best place where we don't have um, loony bin chats. And we can have sensible football discussion with a bit of balance and um, some emotion. But not completely guiding what we're saying. You guys do a great job in the comments. Keep it up. And it's a big over and out from me. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button. To see more videos from this channel, hit the subscribe button. And to be notified every time we upload, ring the bell for those notifications to come through on your device. If you really want to support the channel and me as a content creator, I'll be eternally grateful if you head over to the merch store and grab something or support over on Patreon, patreon.com slash Benjamin Bloom. Thank you for your time. Go watch another video.